up the inside he wants that for that skip barber racing school seat and he is going to do everything he can to get there as well here we go 
Now, no name straight, but he's just defended well. But Rankin gets through, nips by. Horton and Diogo Pinto. We find ourselves one hour away from Title Town, USA, the home of the Green Bay Packers. This is Road America here from Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, where one of those two drivers here tonight is going to become the champion of the Skip Barber Formula iRacing Series. It all comes down to two final races worth of 15 minutes of action and everything is on the line. Jake Sperry, Chaz Draycott here to bring you all of the action. Chaz, it has been a season of twists and turns where no one's truly had the form from one week to the next. But one thing is for certain, it's as close as close can be. It's just one point at the top and we are in for a real treat determining our champion tonight. Absolutely, Jake. It's a joy to have been here for this championship, and it could not be closer, like you say. Just one individual point separates our two title protagonists with this incredible prize on offer. This is how it looks, though, going into it. The Mancunian Harley Horton against the world Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup champion, Diogo Pinto. What a showdown we've got. Horton also has the tiebreaker, so two points needed for Diogo Pinto tonight. It's a six-way fight. For third position, Michael Janney is holding off everybody for that final all-important third place slot. Josh Thompson, Sebastian Weldon, 14 years of age, Michael Romanidis, the Greek driver, Braden Hawkin, and Matt Caruana all have a chance of picking up that third place position overall. But this is what they're going to be racing for here over the course of these final two races. That five-day competition licensing, that skip barber coaching, all there for the top three. But a full season in the 2023 skip barber Formula Race Series worth half a million US dollars. There are still hard charge rewards. There are still first, pre uh, first place prize awards that are out there today, Chaz. But one thing is for certain. There is a big difference between a full season and a half a season. And I think these drivers want to show it tonight. Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, you speak about showing it. It's an opportunity for them to show what they can do in a real car, you know. And if you get half a season less than somebody else, then of course you're going to have to try even harder in the races that you do get to prove just how good you are. And of course, third place as well gets a one-off race meeting appearance. So these drivers really have a lot on the line to consider. What a circuit for tonight, though. I was just saying before we went live on air, it's been years since I've even commentated on the virtual version of Road America. But now we're here for one of the best races I think I'm ever going to cover. Fantastic. 4.048 miles, six and a half kilometers, not a truly tight hairpin in sight. This is a slipstream dream that we've got here tonight, and it's going to be all about the braking zones. Turn one, turn five, and then Canada corner, turn number 12. Those are the three big places tonight to get the passes done, and we expect pack mentality racing of the highest caliber. We absolutely do, yes. The drivers have got to play it really clever tonight. We've seen a couple of race meetings where the slipstream isn't monumental in these cars, but it's still enough to make a difference to the outcome of the race. Think back to Road Atlanta with Diogo Pinto and Matt Caruana, both of those races being determined by pouncing at the right time, sitting in the slipstream, waiting for the car in front of you to just become vulnerable. And even out of the final corner here tonight, Jake, there's definitely a strong slipstreaming opportunity. I don't think it's going to be enough for the driver in second place to get through before they get to the line, but you never know in motorsport, do you, mate? No, you've got that massive run, that crest up to the finish line here around Road America. That's what's going to be so crucial. There's Matthew Zay, second position last time out of course and will certainly be looking to try and improve on that but there is your championship leader number three harley horton and he is going to have all the nerves in the world here tonight you would certainly feel this is the sort of moment in harley horton's sim racing career Chaz, that makes or breaks a driver oh really is yeah that's it you know there's so much on the line here this is a definite moment where he needs to prove what he's like under pressure and that is one of the key factors at making a great racing driver. You know, this is his perfect platform now to show us what he can do. Diogo Pinto 
he doesn't need to prove anything, to be honest with you. But as importantly tonight, some of his red line teammates have come along to join the party, haven't they, this evening, Jake? It's going to be one hell of a storyline, I think. Well, we've been talking all season about his uh, cooperation with Josh Thompson, but Chris Lullen and Luke McKeown are going to be there. Now, notice the right arm then of Pajema Joab Lemonek there, because he is going to be trying to work incredibly hard tonight. Last time out, he was racing with a broken arm of all things, trying to get all of the results that are there. That'll be hampering him slightly, but for Pajema Joab Lemonek, who has proven he has pace, but hasn't had the results to sort of back it up, this is the time he's going to need it. Number one in the hot laps looking to prove a point. And now this flying lap then from the driver's eyes perspective, this is the view you could get if you join iRacing today over at iRacing.com. Brand new members get 40% off into turn number one. Fourth gear playing about in the high res before now this small flick of turn two, staying to the outside, trying to open up here, Chaz. Turn three as much as possible. You get as much drive here off of the exit. You need it heading towards the Moraine Sweep. You really do, yeah. Turn three is such a challenge because it really invites you in early. It's got a long apex curb to it. And sometimes you have to just really be cautious on the throttle because if you clip the gravel and the grass on the outside, you can very easily loop over to the right. Hard onto the brakes, down the hill, then into turn five. Watch for some of the cars trying to swap ends over the curbs as well. They're some of the smoothest curbs you'll find, but still, they can upset the car enough under the bridge then into another 90-degree left-hander. It's a blind entrance into that corner, but we will see overtaking moves down there tonight. The right kink, a big challenge as well, though. It's all about carrying the pace through here for another hard braking zone, but not one that we often see as an overtaking opportunity, Jake. The hurry downs, then negotiating the long, sweeping carousel. Then soon follows this brilliant right-hander where you're just waiting and waiting to fully put the power down in that fifth gear and Lemonek does so it will be torturing the left-hand side tires all the way and then you've got the king it's so dangerous to go too wide through here you're committed through this section and now you're here at the kettle bottoms running towards Canada corner which is this brilliant final overtaking opportunity or the final great place on the circuit sixth gear down through in through the right and you're going at about fourth gear then through that section you're then looking to fly through the final couple of corners then the one flick left the one flick right so that's bill mitchell ben negotiated this final corner a 90 degree right where you just get that late apex in try and get it as straight as possible through and then it's a crest up the hill expect these times to fly in thick and fast because there's only five minutes on the clock it takes about four and a half minutes to get both the laps around 208.817 for Pajem Joab Lemonet beaten immediately by Michael Romanidis. Harley Horton goes quickest on a 208.5, beaten by Luke McEwen, who goes quickest on a 208.4. So the times are absolutely flying. Chris Lullum goes to the top then with a time. Ross Banfield unable to get what was wanted, but Diogo Pinto has taken pole position. 208.40 through right at the end and has the backup to go with it. Absolutely beautiful work then for Diogo Pinto. Let's take a look at the starting grid. This is how they are going to line up for race one of two tonight. It is Diogo Pinto who will have the pole position and will have his two bodyguards around him in Chris Lullum and Luke McEwen in second and third. Harley Horton will have to pass both of them. who will go from fourth position with Matt Caruana fifth and Michael Romanidis in sixth position. Seventh will be Michael Janney trying to defend off that third place overall with Matthew Zace in eighth row five houses two contenders Josh Thompson Sebastian Weldon the two are tied on points in the championship Jemisław Lemonek goes from 11th with Brandon Hawking with a bit of work to do tonight from 12th with Johannes Trout and Simone Pisoni on row number seven row eight houses Matt Busa and Justin Adakinis with Ross Banfield and Jeffrey Decker rounding out the 18 car field that we have tonight for the first race of two that they will be dealing with. One thing that we will absolutely note here, though, is what they have to deal with. They've done the one lap of qualifying, Chaz, but this race here in race one sets the grid for race two, and that's what makes race one very important to make those places early. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, there's even more pressure piled onto this first race of the night because it can then determine how well your second race may go as well. So I'm really excited to see whether we get any of these drivers really pushing the limits, knowing that, to be honest, there are no more chances after tonight. 
they have to get this done or it is just completely over basically there is no sort of more shallow way of saying it than it's do or die here tonight at road america all the cars lined up on the grid looking wonderful behind the iRacing racing sedan pace car if i had to pick anybody now i'm not sure you know the backup may be there for diogo pinto but harley horton is the first car behind them and he's going to be alongside one of his teammates at the very start this first couple of corners is going to be decisive it's going to be more than decisive. It's going to be absolutely everything in terms of how they go about their business here. It is 15 minutes, as we've said. That will go by quickly. Already the pace car dives in. They have to wait for the drop of the green flag. There's been a lot of talk about when do you go in a series like this. They have to wait. There's been talks of jump start. But Harley Horton from fourth. Diogo Pinto on the pole. Green flag in the air. And we are racing here from Road America. Already Harley Horton getting boxed in. And that's going to allow then the likes of Matt Caruana, the chance there on the outsides. They all push towards turn number one. They've all got to hit the brakes. It's so congested into the opening corner. And those cold tyres are going to be very crucial over the opening couple of laps. Caruana has got a fantastic start. He's immediately looking to challenge here in the uh, machine in the number two. Looking to try and get down the inside already uh, now going through. So uh, that will be the likes then of Chris Lullum, who's going to have to deal with. Of course, uh, McCowan is going to be there trying to get as much as he can. He'll be helping Michael Janney out tonight. So a little bit of new information coming in for us. But now too wide, too deep, as they will now descend down the hill through the Moraine Sweep to turn five. This is exactly what Pinto wants, though. He wants the guys behind him to start fighting while he starts to break away at the front. But McEwen, second place at the moment, ahead of Lullum. They're all holding up Caruana and Horton. The two drivers are in the black lids as down the inside goes Michael Gianni. Fantastic opportunism there from the number four. They remain side by side through the right kink. So, so close to each other, but we've seen it all season that these guys can go wheel to wheel. They may not be GT cars, they may not be touring cars, but these guys race just as closely as those two aforementioned categories. Round the carousel once more we go, and this is where the speed is going to start building up massively now towards the end of the lap. What are people going to be doing commitment-wise? Are they going to be showing a nose? Are they going to be trying to frighten their opponents? I think at this point, Jake, it's going to be more sensible to get into a rhythm early on, see who you end up around. These guys know the score by now. They do. Michael Janney is one of them. Has Harley Horton just in front. They're going too wide as well because you've got Carana trying to find a pass on Chris Lullum. Not going to find it then at Canada Corner. Janney searching for the inside isn't going to get there either. So that's going to be key in terms of how they go about their business. But now as they start to focus, it's going to be now the next stage. Who's going to get themselves through? The gap already from the front two is opening out to about six or seven car lengths here. And they've got to try and close that down in that second group they want a shot of victory they can't let the front two break away and cooperate absolutely that's it they need to stick with them they need to try and just disturb any sort of rhythm that they're going to have and this is one of the best tracks in the world to do that at. it's wonderful really is wonderful but you can see there is a gap forming and to be fair Lullum is the one that wants to hold them all up it's just going to be such an interesting dynamic it's great to have them in the championship right at the end as well to shake things up and that's been one of the intriguing oh. parts of it isn't it as oh wide 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 goes harley horton he's going to get caught up by now by Janny. then romanidis wants a piece of the pie as well but i was going to say jake the fact that we get 20 different drivers or the potential of having 20 different drivers week after week is what keeps this so so exciting as well never mind the fantastic racing we get along with it but look at that two by two Oh, almost three in this trouble. There's trouble now over oh, the top no. of the tyre, just like that. There goes the big one already then. And that could have massive, massive ramifications. Everybody finding themselves scattering at sixes and sevens. And crucially, Michael Janney, who is third in the championship, getting caught up in all of it then, going through the middle. So he is the big loser in all of that one. And that tangle is going to really hurt because it was with the driver who was also fighting for third in the championship, Josh Thompson. Yeah, big, big drama there. Two of the drivers that really didn't want that tonight. Two of the drivers right near the top of the standings. We're going to have a quick look back at how that all happened, though. Let's have a quick gander, shall we, and see how it all came about. I think maybe just a little bit too deep down the inside. Let's have a look, Jake. What do you reckon? Well, Matthew Zace's view of this, three into the corner, all having to give room. And ultimately, if you look in the middle, Michael Janney is trying to stay out of trouble. 
and he just finds himself in the middle of no man's land. That's how quickly it can go wrong in a race like this. But now it opens up. Jemeshwab Lemonet then is now at the front of this train with Romanidis and Weldon side by side. There goes Sebastian Weldon straight through, takes the place, important place. Brandon Hawking, Matthews, Ace, Johannes Trout. Sebastian Weldon's going to be oh. grinning from ear to ear right now here, Chaz, because guess what? He's the sort of driver who is going to jump into third in the championship right now, and he'd absolutely love that. He absolutely would, yeah. He would be all over that opportunity. Now, we did speak about the fact that they're going to be bump drafting tonight. We've seen it before in this championship. You can see a little bit of damage on the nose there of Romanidis, and now he's all over the back of Hawking. But if they're not quite centre when they hit the back of the car in front, they do shimmy around quite a lot. Look at this. Romanidis is being freight trained now as Zace goes down the inside. Looking forward again to Brandon Hawking. He's now in the slipstream of Dan... Uh, sorry, uh, Sebastian Weldon. Apologies. Then Lemonek just a little bit in front of the two of them. They're just going to Constantine her up again together. There's more manoeuvres going on behind them as well. Oh, I'm clean. Constant shuffling here. And there is a change for the lead as well. Yeah, there absolutely is. So and now for the lead, you can see now racing for second, losing the place out then is Diogo Pinto. Luke McEwen has gone into the lead. Matt Caruana now up to third. He's dispatched for Chris Lullum, which is a big, big coup for Caruana because Caruana's got to get everything he can to stop right now. The driver third in the championship, Sebastian Weldon, as things stand. But you've still got Harley Horton on the back of this train. This is lap three of the race. He's worked so hard to stay with this front group, but now he's got to pick him off one at a time. Number three from Manchester's got to try and find a way past Chris Lullum. And first and foremost, the Kettle Bottoms and Canada Corner is going to be the key. Now watch out through this kick. How quick is he through this right-hand bend? He's all over the gearbox trying to find a way through. Maybe slightly has to lift out of it for fear of running into the back. And ultimately, he's going to have to stay on the outside searching for an opportunity. Covered by Lullum, no chance for the pass. The supreme confidence and car control these guys have at that sort of level, that close to one another is unbelievable. But again, it's a testimony to just how good this car is, just how good the sim is as well. We get to see racing like this all season long. We were just saying before, I can't believe how quickly it's gone by. But to be honest, Jake, we always say time flies when you're having fun. Top five all in one big train now and then. There is a three and a half second gap back to Lemonex. So it means that these guys can push. They can have a battle. They've got the affordability to just lose a bit of time in the long run here. I think this is a great opportunity now to see exactly what these drivers have got in the dying moments Whoa. of the season. As Pinto round the outside into turn one. You've got to love that brilliant stuff. Very commanding around McEwen. Caruana still third. Lullum still fourth. But Harley Horton, he can see Pinto get to the front now and he's going to be itching to move forward. Big race, Diogo, and you could become a driver who could race the likes of Diogo Pinto today if you log on to iRacing.com and get your chance to do so. Now here comes the chance to come back. Where do you go? Left, right. McEwen's trying to pinch down Diogo Pinto to the bottom, but he's going to get some help then by Matt Caruana, of all people. Remember the last time those two had a battle? Road Atlanta. Oh, McEwen's got to go around. Horton's going to tag him as he goes like that. Bang. There's the hit. And all of a sudden, it is now McEwen out of this one but how much damage is there now to the front wing of harley horton yeah that could have been a very pivotal moment frustrating stuff for harley but he couldn't do anything about it at the end of the day there was just an innocent spin from luke McEwen. he was pushing so so hard and the car floated around we've seen them sideways all season to be fair jake we've seen them really float the car through the corner and it's just that minimal minimal line where you can push it too hard and Harley Horton, I think, has got away with it, but we're yet to see, really, if there's any major issue. Doesn't look like there's any physical or visible damage on the front of the car, so I think he's all good, as now Caruana tries to move on Pinto. He tries to just nip his nose down the inside. I've heard we're going to have a look, though, at a replay here, Jake, from Harley Horton of that incident. We certainly are, as Matt Caruana takes the lead for the first time in this race. So this is what Harley Horton would have seen then, racing for the lead. It's very easy for a car to disappear in front of you, to just be hidden. You can see McEwen on the outside. Where do you go? He had to commit right, and he's very, very fortunate. He only had a glancing attempt there over against the tyre, and not anything more significant than that. He got away with one, did Harley Horton, and crucially, he's still in range. Caruana leads. Diogo Pinto, though, looking to go to the inside here to turn one one will have Chris Lullum for company who's going to absolutely push him every stage of the way and they might both decide to go through into turn one and they do Caruana you're up against the machine here of Lullum and Pinto this is not going to be easy over the halfway stage 
No, absolutely. Caruana is going to be the sort of spearhead of this attack. And I know that Horton, he's going to sit there, he's going to play this clever, and he's going to wait and see where there's any weakness in front. But Caruana goes a little bit deep into turn three, runs over some of the gravel and the dust on the outside of the circuit. Now Lullum is just pushing his teammate. They're not teammates in this championship as such, but of course outside of it, and look at the overspeed from Caruana. And you can see there Horton playing the clever game. And look at the amount of car lengths that he gains on them. Onto the brakes into turn five through the left hander. He's going to slot back in behind Caruana. Needs to be careful though, because he himself is moving around all over the back of Lullum to try and make a move. This is fantastic rear gunnerman ship at the moment by Lullum. Fantastic behavior. At the end of the day, he's doing what he's very well entitled to do, but you can see a little bit of impatience there from Harley Horton one way than the other. He's just showing his nose and making his intentions clear, isn't he? Every single time the hand is shown by Matt Caruana, the gap extends out by an extra tenth of a second. And on this lap, it has been seven tenths that have been gained by Diogo Pinto. So Caruana's got to find something decisive, or maybe Harley Horton's going to decide he wants to get going. And my word is he must. He's going to have to try and find a way through, but he's a bit boxed in right now. He's going to have to push Chris Lullum forward here to move up into third. He's a little bit earlier, potentially, on the brakes. He gets on the brakes. He moves up into third place. So nothing that Caruana can really do about that. He'll drop to the back of this group, and Chris Lullum is playing his role to add absolute perfection here tonight little search at the final corner is there is going to be but no chance then really of making that overtake happen second group though will start closing in led by Lemonek with Weldon Hawkin Romanidis Adakinis Zace and Pasoni in that group all the way down to 11th trying to chase this is very interesting stuff from Harley Horton. Before now, we've seen him so cool, calm and collected. Now you can see that he knows there's not long left in this championship. He's throwing absolutely everything at Lullum right now. Moves over to the right-hand side as he tries to get down the inside into turn three. He's played that one to perfection as well. Needs to be careful on the exit, though. Make sure he gets a decent run. And Lullum could also get caught out here by Caruana. That would be perfect scenario for Harley Horton, but it doesn't work. And now Lullum's on his right-hand side as they go down towards turn five. Carolina. Look Carolina's at this, Carolina's going to give him a shove, isn't he? He absolutely has to push then with Harley Horton because the only way they're going to catch Pinto is if Lullum is dispatched with and one goes through, which means Harley's got to attack. Oh. And there's a spin there in the bottom for fifth position. Lemonek. Who's that going around? That is Pashem Schwab, Lemonek, who's found himself pointing the wrong way. And suddenly it is side by side up the hill. And that is Brandon Hawkin making the pass on Sebastian Weldon then, getting the pass sorted, going around and crucially moving up into fifth place, getting some points. It's not going to be enough to secure that third place overall. But if there is anything that can be done right now for the likes of Brandon Hawk, he's got to go. And it's still too wide. You've got Zace and Romanidis. Romanidis is going backwards. He absolutely is. I'm not quite sure what happened to Premslav Lemonek, but he just flew around all of a sudden. Not sure if there was contact or whether he just snatched the rears, trying to break as late as possible. It's very easy to spin something like this on its own axis, as right now Lullum moves to the left-hand side of Harley Horton, gets very close as they run down towards Canada Corner. Hard onto the brakes they go, and, well, Lullum gets back in front again. I think at this stage, Jake, Harley Horton will probably be happy to sit in second place and finish there, knowing that it's a bit of damage limitation. He knows at this point he will not catch Diogo Pinto. He's not just racing against Diogo. He is racing against Lullum as well. And he's doing an amazing job of it at the moment. I imagine he's not keeping quite as calm as, uh, as he'd probably want to. But still, he's under immense pressure right now, even though he is the car attacking. He's also the car defending as well from Caruana. But look, Caruana is playing the long yeah. game here. He is certainly helping him out. He pushes his countrymen along. And can he do it? Horton is around the outside and so on. Lovely stuff. Great teamwork from the two of them there. I think maybe Caruana yeah. has subscribed himself to be a second rear gunner. Well, you have to say right now, as it is the last lap of this race, they have to get going, and they have to get going quickly. So now you've got to start wondering, at this point in time, with the likes of Harley Horton, how much is Matt Caruana going to help, and how much is he going to hinder when he considers he wants a position? He's going to start pushing Chris Lullum then towards that inside, that outside, trying to get that pass sorted. Horton needs second. It's the Whoa. biggest damn limitation you can get as they go through side by side as they switch, and there's the drive, and a big Oh. Slide. How on earth has that been safe? How on earth has that been safe by Chris Lullum? He's managed to hold on in fourth position, but 
Crucially, Harley Horton gets some breakthrough now, and he's free. He's clear now of Matt Caruana. He's clear of those. And for Diogo Pinto, he would move two points clear at the top of the championship if they are to stay like this. Behind the group for fifth position is being led by Sebastian Weldon, but Brandon Hawkin, not a million miles away from Canada. Here we are in Wisconsin, has a chance. Justin Adakinis is there as well, and that group is going to be key in terms of who can get a run over towards Canada corner. This is a vital, vital last stage of this race, and now it's going to be about driver. Adakinis is the biggest mover and shaker in the field started 16th up to 7th and now looking for 6th position now in the toe it's going to have to try and get this done on the brakes he finds himself then to that outside and he can't quite find a margin so it's going to turn to Diogo Pinto at the front of the field who has absolutely masterminded that opening race you want pressure free scenarios getting that 1.2 1.3 1.4 second gap is enough to say advantage Pinto after race one he gets exactly what he wanted Horton limits the damage in second position and this championship absolutely goes to the final race Amazing stuff. I really don't know how Harley Horton did not get spun around there after the tiny, what well, well, eventually was a tiny bit of contact. But that was just terrifying stuff. Chris Lullen was completely sideways. His car sort of spun back the other way and eventually straightened up. But wow, there were so many moments there for Harley Horton that were really close to the line. And that could have been championship over. But I tell you what, his commitment was unbelievable. Hats off to him. Hats off to Matt Caruana. But what a stunning and very solid drive that was by Diogo Pinto. A championship is 80% luck and 20% skill. Diogo Pinto uh, had himself then the chance. I'll actually, um, I'll strike that and reverse it. 80% skill, 20% luck. Diogo Pinto with the 80% skill taking the victory. Harley Horton with a little bit of 20% luck in the second position, 1.4 seconds behind. It's Matt Caruana and Chris Lullum third and fourth with Sebastian Weldon fifth, currently holding on to that third place in the championship with Brandon Hawking in fourth and, uh, sorry, Brent, Brandon Hawking in sixth and Justin Adakinis in seventh. Matthew Zace, Michael Romanidis, and Simone Pissoni will round out then the top 10. Over the page then to 11th is Pajem Zouav Lemonek with Jeffrey Decker in 12th place. Matt Busa would finish 13th ahead of Johannes Trout with Ross Banfield, Michael Janney, Josh Thompson, and Luke McEwen would be the last driver down in 18th with it all to do in that second race. An all-important second race on top of that, Chaz, and one which you can say, okay, this is the all-important race that's going to go through. So we're going to get a chance, though, now to uh, chat with the marketing manager from the Skip Barber Racing School, Bobby Crew. Now, Bobby, for the Skip Barber Racing Series, uh, what makes the iRacing platform the best platform for you to race on uh, for the Skip Barber Formula iRacing Series? And how does it benefit the drivers that come through the Skip Barber Racing School, both real and virtual? Well, Skip Barber has always had a really good relationship with iRacing. Uh, this goes back many a years, but this is our second year of running this Formula iRacing Series. We see a lot of drivers that come into our programs that are new to racing that have a lot of sim racing experience and then we also see a lot of our pro drivers that have been racing in our formula race series over the past couple of years use this service as a learning tool to be able to better their skills when they get to the track so it's uh it's been a no-brainer to host this series we've seen a lot of success we take a look at last year with some of our big winners Mikel Gata and Elvis Rankin and Elvis going on and winning the big championship last year. So it's just really cool to be able to grow this program and see a lot of success from the sim racers. And I'm sure the drivers that will win the big prizes tonight will be forces to reckon with in this upcoming real life series. We, we've seen the fantastic rise of up and coming sim racers through this system and kickstart their racing careers. But for some of those just joining us here on iRacing and this series for the first time, uh, what do the winning drivers in this series get to move up the racing ladder? Yeah, so the top 10 drivers in the series will walk away with something. But what these drivers are really battling for are what those guys that are going to finish first and second are going after, which are a full season and a half season scholarship in the Formula Race Series. So overall, it's it's half a million dollars of prizes that these drivers are going after. Um, and including in that, you're going to get your five-day 
Skip Barber Racing School licensing. So you're going to go through the three-day program. You're going to learn the basics. You're going to go to the two-day advanced, pick up the pace, learn the racecraft, and then you're going to go racing. And uh, it's really cool now, too, with our partnership with uh, the USF Pro Championships that where these guys could literally go in the span of three years, they could go from iRacing to the Skip Barber Series to the USF ladder system. So it's super incredible. And, and coming from a sim racing background myself, a lot of these guys don't have the means to be able to afford to go racing at this level and to be able to reward these drivers based on their pure talent and what they're showcasing here on the sim uh, and be able to give them this huge real life opportunity. Uh, for me, it's super awesome. And I know the entire here at Skip, the entire team here at Skip Barber are uh, are really excited about being able to give these drivers these opportunities. Well, we've seen an elite caliber of sim racing driver look, driver look to sign up to the Skip Barber Formula I Racing Series. And the craft has been amazing from all these drivers. So uh, what are Skip Barber's plans for the uh, 2024 series? Uh, assuming we have uh, a, a getting a 2024 series of this championship. And what can the winners of the 2023 season expect with the Skip Barber Racing Series compared to last year? So we want to continue it. We want to keep expanding it. And we're hoping that... You know, whoever takes the overall championship uh, or your second place or third place is able to join us for the real life series and is uh, forced to be reckoned with. And, and we'll go on and possibly win the championship. It would be cool to continue seeing these sim racing drivers to be able to go out there and keep continuing. The real life series is going to be awesome. Adding a lot of new tracks. We're out there for more weekends this year. And with our upgraded prize package this year, it's it's the real life series has grown a lot over this last year and we're hoping to do the same thing with the iRacing series. We definitely want to bring it back for a third year. Hopefully we can expand the schedule. Hopefully we can bring back more, more tracks to the series as well to mimic the real life uh, formula race series. So we'll just have to stay tuned. It's a long way away, but we're looking forward to continuing our relationship with iRacing and hopefully having a really awesome 2024 uh, formula iRacing series. Well, we certainly hope so as well. Bobby Krug there joining us, the marketing manager for all the Skip Barber Racing School. We are just moments away from this final race taking shape, and it's going to be massive. Just two points now, the margin, and we have a look at these championship points quickly. And uh, it looks like at the moment, Diogo Pinto is going to be in a position now just to sit and wait. He knows he's just got to hold on at this late stage here, Chaz. Yeah, it's going to be so, so close. And, well, any tiny moment in this race could throw up a, an entirely different result. I'm so pleased that it is coming right down to the wire, though. Yeah. One more final dance, Jake. Let's do it. And the title contenders on the front row of the grid. Janny from 17th will have work to do. So too, Josh Thompson. Hold on to your hat. It's going to be a mega final race. There is Sebastian Weldon in fifth position. He is trying to get as much temperature into his tires as early as possible. Watch out for the likes of Chris Lullum in this race. Green flag in the air, and we're underway. It's a good start, though, by Harley Horton. They're going to race all the way to the opening corner. This could be the make or break moment. Who wants to work with who? Side by side as they run past past the pit wall, looking towards this opening corner. Pinto on the inside, Horton on no. the outside, and gone, and gone, and that will be the title, surely. Harley Horton speared off to the left-hand side of the circuit. I wasn't quite sure who it was when in the back of him. Was it Chris Lullum? I don't think it was Caruana, was it? Caruana would have been on the right. Chris Lullum, teammate of Pinto, that's going to go down like a cup of cold sick, I can imagine. But oh my goodness me, massive drama instantly as soon as this race gets underway. Horton off and in the barriers. I can't even begin to imagine the feelings now, Jake. Flipping heck. Wow. He's trying to keep it going. The car's crabbing about three miles to the left. So he's trying to desperately get a finish if something happens to Diogo Pinto. But Pinto leads. Caruana second. Lullum third. Weldon in fourth. Braden Hawking in fifth position. We'll take another look at it then. So he's trying to pinch to that inside. And it's just a case of Lullum's outbroken himself there into the opening corner, gone straight into the back of Harley Horton. And Horton just a passenger at that moment in time. Oh, man, it's... There's going to be a lot of opinions on that. I can tell you that for free. We mentioned earlier that it's going to be a heavy storyline that more of the red line drivers have turned up for this final round to help Diogo Pinto out. 
that is the exact last thing we wanted to see is them affect the championship in that way with contact. You know, it's great to have them in there and see the teamwork like we did in that first race. But if I'm honest with you, that's not going to go down well at all. I, I don't even want to start elaborating on what might happen behind the scenes. We'll have to wait and see. But right now, we do still have a motor race going on. Pinto leads Caruana, Lullen, Weldon and Hawking. And Weldon up in fourth place. He is well within a shot of getting that half-season prize now, surely, because, of course, Josh Thompson earlier on in the race and Michael Janney, they both had a nightmare, didn't they? They absolutely did. So Sebastian Weldon is in the driver's seat. The drivers that Weldon was looking to try and outscore, he needs outscore by 10 points over the course of this evening. Michael Romanidis is doing that very well. Brandon Hawking, he needed to outscore by about 13. He's managing that with Hawking right there. Weldon is in the box seat as they head towards turn number one. Maybe a look, there is a look down to the inside then as it looks like that's going to be uh, Matthew Zace getting bundled up with Romanidis at this point. Point. Romanidis on the inside, trying to make the move then at turn three here, the fast left-hander. There is Caruana in second position, but ultimately at the moment, Caruana is the only other driver to keep in mind. Going to have a look at a replay then and see what happened to Michael Janney. We've also had Trout knock down the order as well into Canada corner. I was told by a good friend of mine, Dane Baird, it's because of all the beer cans of Canada beer that were left there after the very first event here at Road America. And, well, how many times have we seen that, Jake? Wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact in a sharp turn like that. A little bit of understeer from the car on the inside. And, boom, outside car goes flying into a wall. Michael Janney is going to be feeling really upset with himself because he was fifth in the championship last year. This year, he's into third in the championship with two-thirds, two-fourths, and two-fifths. And then, all of a sudden, he finds the race from... Uh, of nightmares here today and that's his championship efforts over and done with they'll have to wait for another year to join uh, his teammate Elvis Rankin up then with the likes of the Skip Barber Formula Series but at least at the moment at the front Matt Caruana is racing for everything he can possibly get and if Caruana wants that third place in the championship he's going to need some help and some trouble for Sebastian Weldon he's not getting it at the moment Weldon's right behind him in third position now as they start searching through the kettle bottoms toward this Canada corner Lullum on the outside trying to search for it you've got Brandon Hawking who's there as well and Hawking having a very good race here this weekend or this week I should say here at Road America it seems he's lit up for this final round as a little look then comes along from Caruana. He can't get there. He wants revenge for what happened with Pinto twice at Road Atlanta. Yeah, look how close they are even behind as well. So many of them piling in to want to have a go at the front of the field. This is probably one of the closest we've seen the pack after two laps, to be fair. We've actually had a lot of them where they sort of break off into these groups of five, but now we've got twos and threes, but they're still evenly spread throughout the field. It's Pinto leading the way from Caruana. Weldon still in third. Now, after that start finish straight, he started to close in on Caruana. Lullum has dropped back a little bit. Hawking is also spread out evenly. It's all becoming one massive train again, like we saw at Circuit of the Americas. That was one of the best races we've had all season, especially the final laps, Jake. But look at this lot now. Pinto's going to see his mirrors, and all he's going to have is just this white and red absolute sea of cars lining up behind him. But most importantly, Caruana, his dueling buddy from Road Atlanta, all over the back of him and uh, what a role reversal this is right now because someone like Matt Caruana is going to learn to wait if he has learned anything from what happened at Brazelton Georgia here in Elkhart Lake Wisconsin he is going to be patient he's going to wait for it and Weldon is the sort of driver behind in third place 14 years of age and uh, he's quite aptly in the number 14 here today as well as he's driving about who loves racing from the front of the field. If anybody wants to go to the front, it's Sebastian Weldon. He, he's thrived. He's won three races this season by being at the front of the field and holding off on the last lap. And that's the thing as well, you know, with younger drivers, you don't have as much experience of the racecraft, but Sebastian has shown driving way beyond his years. But at the same time, he still has that young driver tenacity of just throwing it at every opportunity where possible. You don't want to tell him to hang back and wait for a couple of laps. He will just send it, and I love watching that about him. It's really intense stuff. But we have these six cars now glued together for the top couple of positions. Only a slight gap back to Luke McEwen, but what a great bit of driving he's done tonight as well. He's been pushing the limits. He's got Zace, then Romanidis, and then Josh Thompson, who's been recovering since the first race. And he's rounding out our top 10 at the moment. Up over the crest once again, Jake. Can't believe there's only eight and a half minutes left. 
I can't believe that Luke McEwen's made up half the field in the first half of the race. He's absolutely <laughs> flown. He's just completely flown, and he's looking for it. Now, there is a look here from Lullum uh, now to the inside, looking to take third away from Weldon, and is going to manage that. But Weldon might have a look back to the inside, then heading towards turn number two, and he will. But he'll have to fall back into line as everybody now starts searching there. Right at the back is Pajemishwar Vlemenek, then making the pass on Brandon Hawkins. So he will gain a position now, move one up. And Lemonek wants to prove at the end of this season that he's worth a, a lot in the terms that he's going to go sim race. This is a really important group, and Brandon Hawkin then here for, is got, trying to do a lot. So too Sebastian Weldon, but the group is only going to congest as they reach this left hand. A turn five, it's the key one on the circuit. Just look at how early they're all braking as well. Obviously, you have to compromise for the car in front. The further back you are in the train, the earlier you have to brake. All of these guys are playing it so clever, but this is one of the main things, isn't it, Jake? This has been the theme of the season. These guys race so closely together. They race so cleverly around each other. They play a masterful performance here, and we continue to see it right into the final round of the season. Seven and a quarter minutes left, round the carousel once again, and we ride on board with Sebastian Weldon, a young man driving way beyond his years, and it is great to see, and I tell you what, it's even more of an exciting prospect to see what we're gonna get from him in the future. Through the kink, the fast right-hander, and into the kettle bottom section of circuit. The top 12 split by 4.1 seconds out there on circuit. And now they start to think about where they want to go. Thinking about where do you want to wow. go? Where has Sebastian Weldon found that? Two for the price of one. But a Bill Mitchell Bend, yes, is going to get it ahead of Caruana. Lemonick also through. Chris Lullen was looking at second position about a straight to go. He's now down in fifth, and it might even be sixth here because you've got Luke McEwen, who I think's just gone through, and he has. So Luke McEwen now is up into fifth place. Yeah, McEwen having an absolute belter. Great drive from him. Really shows how good he is. He's been at some of the top teams in iRacing and top esports teams in the world. And when you see drives like this, it is no surprise against this sort of competition as well. The only thing is, with Weldon making that send down the inside into Canada corner, he did give Pinto a little bit of a gap for just a few corners. He's managed to reel him back in again down the start-finish straight. He's going to do that again before they go down towards Turn 5. A little bit of a dive out to the right there, I think, by Luke McEwen. Actually, no apologies, it was Lullum looking to the right-hand side, trying to open that gap on McEwen. And now, again, we get the slipstreaming, but look to the right-hand side. Here comes Caruana. He's going to move to the... Actually, no, sorry, that's Lemonek on Caruana. Lemonek, who had that massive spin earlier on. He's oh, had a great please. race as well, hasn't he? As now, Weldon goes through ahead of Diogo Pinto. Oh, it all checks up on the exit, though, Jake. It's about to get squirrely through here. Oh, it is, and up the hill, it's a plateaued breaking zone. This next left-hander, Lemonet, on the outside, holds it, has the inside then for turn eight to head to the hurry-down section. Caruana getting freight trained a bit. McEwen wants to get in, Lullum wants to get in. They all want to get in and on the act and try and find their passes. And now through, there's contact. And just like that, there goes Caruana. There goes Pajemitra of Lemonet. And their races and their hopes of victories and podiums are gone in a a flash top two now clear it is now Pinto versus Weldon here in terms of the front of the race and that will be how they'll end the season unless the group in third can chase McEwen, Lullum, Romanidis and Hawking with Matthew Zace hanging on to the coattails. Caruana has carried on going but Premschlav Lemonek has disappeared into the pits unfortunately here's another look back at it Lemonek in front and Caruana tries to slot in. Lemonex lost it on his own, hasn't he? And Caruana just then collects him and wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. More and more of it just ends up in big damage to both cars. Caruana has carried on, though, like I say. Doesn't seem to be affected by it too much, but I'm just really upset there for Lemonex because he came into this with a broken arm, let's not forget, as the number one car, fastest in the hot laps all week, and it's not been a meeting to remember for him. Simone Pessoni has had a big off and has only just gone back to the pits, so he's out of the race as well. But like you mentioned, Jake, we've got two of the most exciting drivers in the series right at the front, head-to-head -head in the last round of the season. And, well, both of them looking at big, big prizes. Pinto looking at the ultimate prize if he just holds on to this position. I think we're looking at potentially sim racing's future. I think we're looking at racing's future as off the road in third position goes Luke McEwen. He is pushing with everything he's got in third place to chase this one with Lullum, with Weldon out in front, with Diogo Pinto 
in second and with a handful of laps remaining, how do you want to go about making this happen? Sebastian Weldon, in five years' time, could be one of the drivers with the hottest meal ticket in town. Diogo Pinto, the current reigning Porsche Esports Super Cup champion, is going to be someone who I think in the next five years is someone who could be a sim racing legend, could make his way up the ranks in racing as well. But now you start thinking about that group, it has suddenly congested up behind and we've got a race on our hands and suddenly once more, you don't quite know where the table turns. Absolutely, any of these guys could get a magical slipstream out of nowhere and just pick the right way to go at the right moment. That's the thing, you, it's, it's very easy to slipstream up to the car in front of you, but it's knowing when to go right, when to go left, and when to just push them along, basically. There's so many of them here behind these guys that can take advantage of the slipstream and use it whenever they want. But look, Pinto's backing out, and McEwen says, nah, not in your life, mate. I'm going to go over to the right-hand side. And is he going to go for the lead? He's not. Sebastian Weldon puts the car exactly where he needs to. McEwen down the inside of Pinto, makes the move stick, or does he know the overlay? Sorry, overlap is still there. Pinto's going to have the inside now for the left-hander, but then McEwen's going to have the inside for the final right-hander. Lullum is then going to be with him as well, and down the inside of him comes Rom. Manidis. He nearly makes contact as well, wheel to wheel. This is epic racing. We're going to have just one more lap to go at Road America. The final lap of the season in the Skip Barber Formula I racing series. Let's do it, Jake. Let's have a belting final lap. This has been great. Sebastian Weldon will pray that they keep on scrapping behind. Look at them swarm, heading towards turn number one. McEwen's tried for four corners to get this sorted. They've been racing for almost a mile and a half, two miles, side by side, trying to find this move, but still on that inside. McEwen trying to get through, and it's a bit of tire to tire contact out into the grass. Goes Diogo Pinto, can he bring it back on track? He can, everyone's there, but Pinto will get freight trade to the back of this group. He won't pay that too much mind. The championship's in his pocket. But you've got Zace, Romanidis, Hawking, Lullum, Luke McEwen, and now Sebastian Weldon to seven tenths of a second away might be safe on this final lap. But McEwen has come from the back of the field up to second place. He's the sort of driver that makes you wonder, why weren't you here for all of the races this season? You'd have done man magnificently. Roman Edis back there in fourth position, trying to defend from Brandon Hawking. This for a top five in the series between those two drivers trying to push it out. Of course, Roman Edis with a brand new team. He'll join Coanda over the course of the next few months. So he's got that to look forward to. But now as they go through the carousel for the final time, we go on board with Diogo Pinto, who is the champion incumbent at this point in time, looking at the group in front, thinking there's still a chance that the podium could change hands. And it's Chris Lullum at the front to that little group who could potentially lose on to it at this moment. What a season of consistency it's been for Diogo. He's been in the right place at the right time. He's always had a turn of pace to be top three, top four, any given race. And as he goes through, a chance for Roman Edis then to get the move on the inside. And he's going to manage it. It's not over for the final corners though. McEwen has caught right up to Sebastian Weldon. It's going to have to be a last lap lunge if he wants to get the pass for the lead over the final corner. It's not going to matter for that much. The Diogo Pinto will round the final corner. He will take a title, but Sebastian Weldon will end the season the same way he started it, with a victory here, this time at Road America. Diogo Pinto, though, will race ace to the line and will be your Skip Barber Formula I Racing Series champion. He's got a full seat this year in the Skip Barber Racing Series. Amazing prize and fantastic performance by Diogo Pinto. Have to say, without trying to put too much of a sour spin on it, it's a shame to see that that's how the title was decided. But still, you can't argue with the fact that Diogo Pinto has done everything he can do this season. Look back at races like Road Atlanta. Two times in a row, he made both lines work into the final chicane on Matt Caruana, and he absolutely schooled everybody at certain points this season. He is a real star, we all know that and he is very deserving of the title and that half a million dollar prize at the Skip Barber Racing School. What a season. He is the consummate professional sim racer. There is nobody in the world right now who can beat him, sometimes it feels. But this one driver who won this race today might just, and I think every sim racing team in the world should be looking to try and sign him. Sebastian Weldon picks up the victory in 15 minutes and six seconds and wins by a margin of just a tenth at the
the end over Luke McEwen, who came from the back of the field as the hard charger to finish in second. My word, could he make something happen if he did this next year full time? Michael Romanidis will finish off in third with Chris Lullum fourth and a great effort today by Brandon Hawking in fifth place. Matthew Zace would beat out your reigning champion now, Diogo Pinto in seventh with Jeffrey Decker in eighth. Ross Banfield finishing in ninth and Matt Busa in the number 10, rounding out the top 10. Only the 13 finishers, Josh Thompson, Matt Caruana, Justin Adakinis and Simone Pisoni, uh, two laps down will be the first of the retirees, including the Gemisoire Vlaminek, a very, very, I would say, disappointed Harley Horton in 16th position with Johannes Trout and Michael Janney making up 17th and 18th, the end of the race that goes through. So for Diogo Pinto, he will pick himself up then with a full season in the 2023 Skip Barber Formula Racing Series worth half a million dollars. But you also have to say, though, Chad, there's still half a season there for the likes of Harley Horton, and he's still got that to look forward to. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's it's nothing to be sniffed at. You know, it's amazing the prizes that are on offer here. Skip Barber Racing School in their partnership with iRacing have been absolutely phenomenal. You know, they've been so supportive and they've put up this incredible prize for beautiful, beautiful driving, which we do get to see in this championship. You know, I think this has been ultimately one of the best or just best examples of sim racing that I've ever seen. Honestly, I've really enjoyed this championship. The events that we've had have all been so, so close. And like I said before, these aren't GT cars. They're not touring cars, but these guys race them so closely that you would, you could honestly just change the body shells on these things and they would still race just as close. It is absolutely wonderful stuff to watch. And we do have a very deserving champion. Like I say, we can't completely overshadow what happened at turn one and take away from the fact that Diogo Pinto is so good. I, I, I think that in terms of being an all-around driver, what makes an all-around driver, you can't get any other better driver than that. And we're going to have a chance now to talk to your reigning champion, Diogo Pinto. He's here with us now. Diogo, you went out there and you did business today. You had to get at the front of the field. You got pole position. You went and won the first race. The second race, you kept yourself to the front of the field. You kept yourself out of trouble. How important was it today to stay out of trouble in what was such a crucial final two races of the season? Yeah, in a way, to, to come here and first race was very important. I needed to win the first race and in the second one, uh, I haven't looked properly at the incident, but it's very, well, for me, it's very disappointing to win like this. It's not, I've won championships before and never like this, so it's not not the way I want to win. Very, very sorry for Ali. Uh, Lulam definitely didn't, didn't mean to do that. He's not a dirty driver by all means, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, very sorry for Ali again, and, well, I just had to finish the race pretty much. You finished the race. You had a very, very good race in that second race. But let's talk about how this season's been for you over all of the circuits. You found yourself up there, top three, top four every single time. For you, in terms of having the consistency around all the tracks, what has it meant for you getting onto iRacing, understanding all of those tracks and very different circuits for you to be quick at every single one of them? Yeah, I struggled quite a lot in the first race at Lime Rock. I was just lacking pace, so I was lucky there to pick up good points. Road Atlanta, I knew it was going to be one of my best tracks, so I maximized there with the double win. And then at Coat uh, was not great. Uh, Virginia actually had good pace. I had to buy and learn the track completely from zero, but I had good pace there, but my driving was really poor. And here, Road America has always been one of my best tracks, so I managed to put it on Polo in the first race, and then, yeah, well, it felt comfortable, especially around here in North Atlanta. It was my, my best tracks for sure. Well, you go now from Lisbon to the United States of America. You've got a full seat for the year. So talk about the excitement you have now as you're going to be racing in the open seats, which has kick-started many different careers throughout the years. What's it mean for you to now be part of that legacy now of sim racers who have jumped into that real world of racing and looking to take it by the horns? I've done and I've done very a lot of racing since I was since I was very little in go karting in Portugal. I won the championships, two national championships. So I'm definitely not a rookie when it comes to real world racing, and uh, I definitely know the basics. And i racing is a really good tool to to help learn the tracks, the competitiveness of the races, the setup, how the car works. So I definitely have that those uh, factors in 
in, in tech because I've, I've been sim racing and doing karting since I was uh, a young kid. So I'm looking forward to get back again on uh, real world racing. Well, let that be a message to everyone next or over the course of this season coming up for the Skip Barber Racing Series. Diogo Pinto is by no means a rookie and he will show everyone what it means. He joins us as a champion here in this series overall. And we will find ourselves with some wonderful action. Looking down the pits, though, you find yourself, Chaz, over to Luke McEwen, who has managed to finish off in second position in that second race. What a drive he had. Luke, that was absolutely amazing, that performance. 16 places gained from the back of the grid. You must be over the moon with that one because it's not like these are 16 rookies that you've overtaken. You know, these are some of the finest eye racers in the world. And, you know, it's just an epic performance. You must feel great. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. But first uh, of all, it's uh, unfortunate for Michael because I was doing this race to kind of try and have a, him, him, make, allow him to have a teammate mm. to to get P3 in the championship. But he had a bad run of events. I need to have a look back. I haven't really seen what happened. But yeah, um, from last, P2 is really good. It's annoying to not get the win, but yeah. <laughs> Always the perfectionist, always the perfectionist. I, I, I totally agree, though. You know, it's a real shame for uh, for Michael, but I, I suppose it's part and parcel of open wheel racing sometimes, isn't it? I mentioned that you yeah. know, the guys in this field, you, you race them like they're GT cars or touring cars, and they can lean on each other a bit. You know, you're all so close to each other. It's a great thing to watch. But unfortunately, there's a very fine line, isn't there, between it going very right and very wrong? Yeah, yeah, like you can always clip wheels. That's the the main thing, like... Wheel to side pod is normally fine, but if you get wheel to wheel, yeah, it will normally end up in a spin or, or any, anything else, so yeah. Well, Jake alluded earlier to the fact that you weren't here for the entire championship, but would you uh, would you be back for another one if we do this again and see you for the whole season? Because I'm sure we'd all be very excited to see how you got on. Yeah, I, um, yeah, most likely I would be able to do it. Just things didn't really line up this year, but yeah, always next year. I'd be happy to to jump in and give the whole season a go. Well, we certainly look forward to it, Luke. Thanks very much for joining us, mate. Well done on the result, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Luke McEwen there, an absolute star tonight, Jake. Like you say, an amazing performance indeed. But you're further down pit lane or right at the top of pit lane with our race winner, Sebastian. Sebastian, um, I, I think it goes without saying that you had to really work for that race win there in race two. Uh, it looked like you had to try and get to the front. You like racing from the front. And everything seemed to line up for you on that last lap. Second and third started battling, and you had the ticket to basically drive away. I I hope that we've got Sebastian Weldon. Sebastian, can you hear us, bud? I don't think we can, which is a no. real shame uh, just for the moment. So we'll just wait until we can hear Sebastian and we can get back going again. But, you know, Chaz, you know, we sit right now in this situation after a, a fantastic second season of the Skip Barber Formula I Racing Series. And it just goes to show you that this is a series built on consistent results. And if you can find consistent results in this series, you have a chance to go a really long way. And it's not just when you look at, okay, the hot lapping process. It's also through these races. It's up through the racing ladder. It's one of the most brilliant initiatives I have ever seen to get sim races into racing. Absolutely. And, and the thing is, it puts you in a really pressurized environment from the very start. You know, you've only got 10 races over the whole season to get it right. And there's no guarantee that you're going to be in all of them. You have to qualify, get in the top 20, do all the hot laps and be quick enough just to pre-qualify for the event. You've got that pressure, and then you've got the two races on the night. You get one lap qualifying as well. You've got some of the finest eye races in the world. Massive prizes on offer. I mean, flipping heck, I can't even deal with making a brew properly for me misses. I, I don't think about the pressure of getting all of this right over the course of a season. It's unbelievable. It's fantastic, though, because it shows you just how good these drivers are. And like we've been saying with Sebastian, it's just been unreal, the fact that he's driving so far beyond his years. I think we've got Sebastian back with us now, though. Sebastian, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. There we go. Loud and clear. Sebastian, uh, let's talk about that second race because you had the ability to break away in the final stages there, uh, moving to the front. Is leading from the front, leading by example, the sort of way you like winning your races? Um, Yeah, 
it was it was a good race i mean i would prefer to lead and uh win the race but um it was when that the championship was on the line but uh yeah i gave it my best and uh i tried well you certainly tried throughout the season we saw you cropping up with victories here there and everywhere in terms of building on your racing career now you've managed to finish the championship in third place so you get one race in the skip barber racing series paid uh, for you so in terms of how you want to go about now constructing your push into racing how important is that one race going to be for you to say hello world this is me sebastian weldon um it's gonna mean a lot especially because you just need the track time you need the um you just need practice and who it's it's just always good to uh put some these events on like this so that people can get a chance from moving to sim racing to uh, real life and, and yeah it'll be a it'll be a fun uh, season it'll be a fun season and uh forgive me for asking you uh sebastian because i'm sure it'll be the first time in your racing career of uh, a lot of times uh, in terms of the way that you race but uh racing for you in terms of what it means for you of course the lineage of what racing means for you and your family and of course your dad um how what does it mean for you to get into racing and what really inspired you as a driver to take up racing so Racing has been with my family for a long time now, especially since my dad drove IndyCar a lot. And yeah, it's um, it means a lot. Racing, it's always means, it's always meant a lot to me. And my goal, my racing goal is to hopefully be better than my dad. Well, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Sebastian Weldon is shooting for the moon, and I believe that he can reach the stars in the Milky Way. And joining us then with a victory here at the final round of this championship, I think he can go a very long way on top of that, joining us with a victory here at Road America. But that is going to bring our proceedings over towards a close. This is how it all stacks up to finish then. Diogo Pinto, your reigning champion then, getting it done, 252 points to 246 from Harley Horton. Sebastian Weldon finishes third in the championship. Michael Janney is slowly getting there, but he will be frustrated. It was fifth last year, it's fourth this year, and he's hoping that he gets a top three over the next time. Chaz, this is massive in terms of a championship. You couldn't ask for a better season top to bottom. Every single lap, every single race was pure entertainment, Jake. I've absolutely loved it. It really has been entertaining. iRacing and the Skip Barber Formula iRacing Series, Skip Barber Racing School have all put on a hell of a show. And it's been good to finally work with you in the box as well. It's been about seven or eight years I've been on iRacing and we've never quite passed. We've always been ships crossing in the darkness, in the fog, whatever the phrase is. But it's good to finally have been in the box together. And what a great season we've had, mate been an incredible season it's been incredible sharing it with you Chaz and of course everyone who has been watching at home what a season but sometimes it's about being the most complete driver and I believe the most complete driver won the championship Diogo Pinto is in one of the most lucrative seats that sim racing can buy he takes a challenge with the real world in a seat worth half a million dollars we'll see you next time we see you and this was brilliant sim racing action with iRacing <laughs>